Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyan Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah A question was asked, Assalamu alaikum, if someone knows Arabic and they're able to benefit from the scholars like Sheikh Abdul Mahsin, meaning Sheikh Abdul Mahsin al-Abad, Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi, Imam bin Baz, Imam bin Uthaymeen, Rahimahumullah, Jami'an, wa hafadahu Sheikhana Sheikh Abdul Mahsin. Should they listen to their tapes and seek knowledge online while they work their normal schedule? Or is it better for them to attend Durus with local Tulab al Ilm? Also, can one attain a high level of knowledge by listening to the classes of scholars online? When I returned from my travels, I wanted to continue my studies online with recordings of ulama, but one brother mentioned to me that a person cannot attain ilm through online classes. Jazakallah khairan. So there's many issues there uh, that our brother has asked about. And first and foremost, uh, the issue of benefiting from those great imams, those imams that passed on and their durus are recorded, and our Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Masan al Abad. Absolutely, that should be a part of your uh, regular regime, if you will. In listening to those durus and lectures of those major scholars, and they're, they're imams of this time. Imams of Ahlul Sunnah. And so with that being the case, uh, in fact, when you listen to students of knowledge and even sometimes other and other mashayikh, you should put them generally on a scale comparing to what you hear from those great imams when it comes to a lot of masail. Take a look at what the individuals that you listen to and how it goes in accordance with these great imams. Not saying that these imams don't make, haven't made mistakes uh, or anything like that because the Prophet ﷺ said All the children of Adam commit sins and make mistakes and the best of those who sin are those who repent. But what it does mean is you have a mizan of those who are ulama arbaniyun the ulama that are ma'ruf bil ilm Wafiq, and in reviving the Sunnah in this time, and Imam Al Albani should be on your list as well. Uh, with that being the case, or in light of this, I recall when I was uh, I asked uh, Sheikh Suleiman Al Rahini, and I related this story before a question about my travel when I was gonna uh, when I was leaving Medina the first time. And I told him I wanted to go and, you know, spend some time to where I didn't have to work and I could do some what we call tafarraq, where you can just devote some time to seeking knowledge without working. So I told him about this. And he told me that exact golden advice. He said, put it on the scale of those four. Of those He mentioned uh, uh, Bin Baz, al Bani, Bin Uthaymeen, and Sheikh Muqbil. Uh, he mentioned those great imams, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, and he said, make sure that whatever you're listening, when you're in Durus, in this other country that you're going to, make sure you're putting it on in light of what you learned and what you've heard from those great imams. And I did exactly that, and I would find sometimes, especially from students of knowledge, you know, if you're going through a book with a student of knowledge, some Yemeni, Yemeni students of knowledge, and, and so on and so forth, that had benefit, you know, and it was good to make Maraja and go through some of these books again. And uh, I found sometimes mistakes that I could say, no, that that was kind of strange. Because the problem is when you learn just from books, as the Salaf used to say, the one who uh, learns from, takes his book as a scholar, then he is misguided. And the reason being, you could read, and ex even and now we have so many books that are explained too. It's not just the metan, not just the text, but it's also uh, mashru, uh, you know, it, 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 or it, and as a sharh, you know, it has an explanation for that text. And if I read that text, and someone else reads that text, and maybe both of us have sought knowledge, or whatever the case may be, we still are going to have our own ways of teaching. And with that being the case also, as human beings, we, we differ and we see issues. Sometimes the more you speak, uh, 
you, uh, it, you know, sometimes you might say one ibarra, one strange statement, or one statement that's a little off, or, you know, because we're prone to mis make mistakes. So the point being is that, or a mas'ala that, you know, it's not clear in the text, it's a mas'ala that you came up and so you made your own sort of ijtihad or you had your own understanding of that issue without having studied it or having run it by some of the major scholars or whatever. So then it's easy to sometimes in Durus with students of knowledge and even mashayikh, even mashayikh and especially younger mashayikh and especially mashayikh that, you know, maybe are not known uh, for that strength in the You know, they might be just a sheikh. You wanted to attend a dars and it was nice, but you heard a strange uh, statement that he made that wasn't in accordance with what you heard on uh, many times from various mashayikh ahl sunnah You know, it could be one mas'ala or it could be a, a something very daqiq, you know, very uh, specific issue. But he could have went astray on that and made a mistake. And then you could follow him in that mistake if you don't have the tools. And so, with that being the case, I say that you benefit from those imams without doubt. Secondly, you also try to attend at least one lecture because of the thing you'll get from the student of knowledge that you won't get by just listening to tapes is you're going to get a different type of reward. Because just being in that gathering, as the Prophet wasallam said, that every, you know, you're going to be engulfed by Rahmah and you're going to be, you know, surrounded by the Malaika and you're going to receive Ajr for that. And that's something you more than likely aren't going to get the same, you won't get the same reward by just listening to tapes. So going to a Dars, uh, you know, it has its benefit as well. So try to do both. And a way that you can do that, for example, if you go to with a student of knowledge in your local area and he's teaching Kitab al-Tawheed, also, when you're in your car, listen to the explanation of, of Bin Uthaymin or something like this, you know, something so that way it's in accordance with that. So you're just strengthening it and you're going over and you're going to get much more uh, a broader understanding with Bin Uthaymin, but you're also gaining the benefit of that dars. Uh... Also, can one attain a high level of knowledge by listening to classes of scholars online? Uh, one can improve their knowledge and gain, one can gain knowledge that way. It's not like gaining the knowledge of sitting with ulama, of course, but it may be the second best alternative for someone who can't leave the UK, who can't leave Germany, who can't leave Sweden, who can't leave France, who can't leave America, whatever the case may be that this may be the second best, this is the second best alternative that they can benefit from those uh, lectures of the ulama, and that's why they're there. So Allah has made it easy for people to benefit. So yes, they can benefit immensely. How do you judge a high level of knowledge? I'm not exactly sure. You're probably not going to make a scholar by just listening to tapes. But at the same time, that doesn't belittle what you're going to gain as benefit if you have mumarasa, you continue to study and you benefit. Uh, and then you said, I want to continue my studies online with recordings of ulama. And as I said, I think that's been covered. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.